Hey guys. Ah, that's good enough. So, how you guys doing? This is Andrew Bocher with GY6 Outdoors. In a beautiful area right now, I wanted to test a new tent. Now this one's from Rustic Ridge. It's fairly inexpensive, it's fairly small, it's under five pounds and it holds two people. Now in my opinion and in my experience, two people means one and a half people or two very small people but one big person. But this tent's from Rustic Ridge. I saw it over at a sports store. They sold it for 90 bucks. I've had good experience with tents that are three season that do great in four season. They do great with high winds, a lot of rain, a lot of snow. I've taken many of three season tents into four seasons and it does fine. Just have a good bag and get insulated mattress and you should be fine. So without further ado, this is the Rustic Ridge two person backpacking tent. Nice. And if you wanted to, and if it does fit two people, you can split the weight between two different people and each person's only carrying two pounds, five ounces roughly. That's really cool. So overall dimensions, it's saying the size is eight feet, three inches in length, four feet, one inch in width and 40 inches tall. So that's a decent sized tent for being only 4.11 ounces. I'll get that later. A little Buffalo Trace bourbon. Oh yeah, we'll do, a, we'll do a finger of it. Stay, don't spill it, I'll cry. Mm. Buffalo Trace, one of the best bourbons you can buy and it's fairly inexpensive. It's the nice thing about doing this outdoor channel, I'm not shooting guns like I do on GY6 vids, so I can drink and review, which is awesome. So, factory tape seams on rainfly and bathtub floor provide superior protection for the weather. Awesome, I like bathtub floors, which means the waterproofing material in the bottom of the tent comes up a little bit. That way, if there is any water rushing in for any reason, if you're on a bad campsite and water starts running down, it doesn't run into your tent, which makes it nice. You're gonna get condensation in most tents when it's cold out because you're hot, outside's cold, condensation happens underneath your mat. It doesn't mean the tent's leaking, so keep that in mind. Breathable fabric and no CM mesh tent. Body keeps tent well ventilated. No CM mesh is very important. If you've ever been around no CM biting gnats and you don't want those little boogers which are super small getting into your tent. So it says two large vents on the rainfly which look to be, I think front and rear of the tent, I believe. It doesn't matter really. Two doors and a vestibule make it easy to share the tent, which is nice because if your friend or your significant other is on one side of you, they don't have to crawl across to you in a small two person tent to get out if nature calls in the middle of the night. Uh, not fun, not fun at all. So two doors, either one can open up the door and leave, which is usually rare with a two person tent. Usually it's one door. So two doors, phenomenal. They're thinking ahead. So this tent could be good. Let's see, let's open it up and see what it looks like. Mm. Cheers to you guys. Comments, likes, subscriptions, all that. It means the world to me that you guys support and special thanks to our fan support page. Links in the description if you haven't seen it already or know about it, you can go click on that, it'll take you over there. GY6 Outdoors is mainly fan funded at this point and it really helps to cover production costs to get out to unique locations and do reviews like this. Yes, I can easily do this in a backyard or in a park or somewhere where it's noisy, but I like to go out in the middle of nowhere where I'm truly in the elements. I travel so I can do reviews in unique places. So when you watch videos, you don't get bored. Your time is super valuable and I wanna appreciate that and respect it by bringing you content that doesn't bore you and it doesn't become redundant. The same old tree behind me, the same old spot I sit in. I don't wanna do that. I wanna be a different type of outdoor channel where I take you on adventures along the way while still reviewing products. It keeps it interesting. Let's open this. Uh, Stand up and see what it looks like and see what it's like when we try to pitch it. Ooh. Damn, that's good. Okay, let's go. All right, so I'm not exactly sure how much of this is solid bedrock or dirt to, to put the stakes in. If it is pretty solid, we'll move to another spot, but let's open it up, see what we got inside. Hopefully it's exactly what they say you have. A bag, yay, and a box. Don't need the box anymore. That's good, so this is what it looks like. This is the tent itself and the bag. Fairly slight weight. It's nice to see it outside the box because you do lose quite a few ounces when you get rid of that cardboard. The bag seems to be, eh, it's all right. I wouldn't trust it to hold something very important, but it's good enough for a tent. Put the bag to the side. Got our stupid string that I can't stand they do on these tents. I don't know why they put these strings on there. I guess it's for the packaging. Don't need that either. Don't worry, I pick up all my trash. So inside we have stakes, poles, 
little pockets. I'm guessing this is for, uh, oh, cool. So you have a removable pocket. So the pocket that came with the tent that they said that you had, you can remove it so you don't need to carry the weight, which is pretty cool. That's, that's thinking outside the box. A lot of tents have these pockets. I never use them inside the tent. I'm like, gosh dang, that's extra weight. And granted, it is just ounces of weight, <laughs> nothing crazy, but still it's extra weight. That's cool. Now we have our tent and our rainfly. Rainfly is there, tent is here. Let's see what the footprint looks like. Not bad, not bad at all. Now I'm gonna say something right out of the gate. I see no instructions on exactly how you should set this up. So my guess is put poles in, stake stakes down, add rainfly. Rainfly, maybe it's maybe instructions are in here. Nope. Just the rainfly. Sun is coming and going because of the clouds, so I apologize about the shift in light, but such is outdoors. So it looks like the rainfly is held down mainly by stakes. And there's some frayed, eh, there's some frayed stitching down here, but it looks to be not bad. It looks to be just a little overstitch. Wasn't part of the stitching coming and done. It was just frayed and it's still good. It's just that furry edge. And then we have completely taped inside seams, which is nice. So these seams seem to be fairly well taped, protecting what it is. The tape seams are protecting water from coming in through the stitching aspect of a tent. So that's cool to have tape rather than just like a basic rollover waterproofing. That stuff wears off over time. And next thing you know, your rainfly is just unnecessary dead weight that doesn't protect you from anything. Zippers. Wow. Zippers seem to be pretty good. Let me adjust the light for you guys. All right. <laughs> Fixed the cameras and got the box back so I can take a look at what this is supposed to be set up as. So big and small. Steak, 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 steak. Sounds like a plan. Oh, hey, what do you know? A company that actually gives you reliable stakes. These look to be pretty substantial. All right, we will see when we start hammering them because I think we might have to go through. I'm almost certain this is soft enough. If not, I'll move here in a second, but these stakes seem to be substantial. Let's put those down there. Let's look at the tent poles. Cool. Basic, simple, easy. And the tent poles have these little knocks in them. Standard quick connect poles. All right, so it got some good flex in them. So when the wind kicks in, it's like Yeah, I mean, you can bend these all the way to there and it still holds out. Cool, good to know. Let's go, I'm guessing this is the big one. This connects out. I'm trying to keep these videos straightforward. A lot of you guys watching know how to put up a tent. I don't want to go over, and these poles are made out of this particular aluminum. This one's got some good flexibility as well. This is for the big part. Cool, that's very easy to remember. Let me grab my hammer slash ax and see if we can hammer a stake in first before we start dinking around. Oh, they're there. I was like, where did I put the stakes? Let's see if we can hammer in this. Not too deep. Let's see about over here. Ooh, well, <laughs> sound gun. I was just barely hitting this thing and it started to bend. Damn it. <sighs> Rustic Ridge, I try to give you a compliment on your stakes and they're pieces of shit. It's bent, it barely hit hard surface and started bending. Watch. Just barely tap, tap, tapping in it. Ugh, what else can I say? Let's try to, let's put this tent somewhere else because it looks to be that this ground is too difficult for the stakes. 
Good thing is, is steaks aren't the tent. Steaks are steaks. So you can, speaking of steaks, I'm super hungry. <laughs> So you can buy new steaks, and if this tent itself as a whole performs well, just replace the steaks. Losing some important material here. Now I'm noticing I'm in sand, which sand's everywhere around here, but also hard dirt. Got our poles. Oh, no way! What? A random tent stake. What do you know? It? An actually good quality steak we might use that that's funny now I'm noticing and this is kind of funny unplanned unintentional but there's a lot of sand everywhere so the sand super fine which means there's no real anchor point like you can stick a <laughs> in the dirt and it really won't I guess it kind of holds in place this might work but this is a good example of preparation is king, like I always say, in the fact that if you were coming out here and you're like, I'm gonna bring this tent. Well, it's a non-freestanding tent, which means you need an anchor point for the stakes or else the tent just falls over. Uh -huh. So if you go into the snow or sand or areas where there is no real viable thick earth to hammer stakes into, your tent that's non-freestanding won't work. You're kind of dead in the water Damn. Let's we'll see what happens. Let's see if we can put it up real quick and slightly get it going. Let's get the poles in there first. Rain fly to the side. Lots of sand. Pocket over there. Don't need that. that. I like the poles. I like the fact that it's simple. They set up very easy. We stick the poles through these little sleeves like that. And insert the ends into the grommets, which seem to be pretty well made grommets. I like the fact that they're solid. Some grommets can go bad on you though, so you gotta keep an eye on it. There's that. Do you see how, oh. I mean, it's standing up, but give it a second. Yeah, non-freestanding. I have a little tent that I've used for years that's non-freestanding, but I've always been in areas that has viable source of staking it down. This does become an issue when you put it in a place that does not have a good solid base. Where's that other grommet? Where are you? Where are you, foo? There you are. Okay. So you can see the tent kind of come alive a little bit. And this is your tent. We just need to stake it out now. Let's try a couple stakes. God, this sand gets, this sand is everywhere. So let's stake this back here. Mm -hmm. So you can see just by holding onto this one piece, I don't need my hammer, I don't think. I can just shove this into the ground. Yeah, this is probably not gonna work, but we will see. I just wanna see what it looks like in space-wise. So one stake, you can already tell it's being held up. Nice thing about being in the sand is you can just push these stakes in the ground and get it nice and taut right out of the gate. See what it looks like. Actually, those stakes are holding quite well. All right, we'll be able to do this after all. And we don't have to use the hammer because these stakes shove right into the ground. Now, granted, this wouldn't be very viable if the wind's really picked up, keep that in mind. But for a view of seeing the size, I'm gonna tell you right now, looking at this, this is not, this is not a two-man tent. Rustic Ridge, that's embarrassing. That's embarrassing. Ain't no, two dudes in here, two? This is a one-person tent. Rustic Ridge. That's some false advertising, this is some bullshit. If you bought this and didn't test it out beforehand, you'd be stuck up that creek without that paddle. And I don't know what's on these zippers, but it's like, I think what it is is leftover threading, leftover threads from the, from the factory. There's these little like spiderweb threads that are everywhere and it looks like fishing line. Yeah, got all the stakes in. Ugh. And you can't beat this scenery. God, it's beautiful. All right, so that's fully staked out. 
and it's not much bigger. It's just way more stable now. I'm definitely liking the tent for a one-person tent. This is a cool little one-person tent, and the weight's still not bad, even for a one-person tent. I guess, if depending if I'm 6'3", 225 pounds, I'm looking at this like, hell no. But if you were a smaller guy, yeah, I, I guess you two two people fitting in this. You just wouldn't be very spacious, but you have to also imagine where are you gonna put your gear? Are you gonna store your gear in your tent or are you gonna store your gear outside the tent? Granted, this tent does have vestibules on both sides, I believe, we'll see here in a second, when you put the rain fly on. So you can put your gear under the rain fly vestibule. That would work. Um, and you'd just be really snug with your buddy or snug with your significant other, and that's not a bad thing. Honey, I promise, this said it was a two-person tent. You just have to get closer now. <laughs> Zippers on the doors. Seem to be pretty damn good quality. No sticking points. No sticking points at all. Huh. Oh, that's just me letting go. Oh, finally, did we get one? Ah, nope, we just got caught on the clip. That's all we got caught on. These zippers are cool. I like these zippers a lot. Cool, well done. Well done, Rustic Ridge. You got all these little white hairs though. What the freaking hell is this spider webbing stuff? So obviously we have the clips on the side of the tent. Snap all these clips onto the tent poles. This keeps it a little bit more rigid. There's no clips for the tent to go to the bottom poles, just the clips up here. Nothing to hold this taut. It'd be kind of cool if they had a little guy line here. That way, if I can grab it. If they had a guy line attachment here, you can pull a guy line down and out to give it more interior room. But as it sits, without that guy line section that could tension this out, which would give you way more headroom, without it, all this just sags. Hmm, I wonder if I can back, I wonder if I can back this out. No, nope. the more I stake the stakes out, it gets more taut. But if you had a guy line, yeah, there's enough material here. If you had a guy line right in the middle, look at that. You just have one little attachment point here. You can run a guy line onto the ground, and boom, you have a huge increase in overall headspace. I don't know. If the wind blows, the tent surface is going to be all over your face. Huh. There's no more, there's no more anchor points, is there? Nope. All right, let's put the rain fly on. It looks like it only attaches to this tent by toggles. Ugh. All we would need is one simple page of instructions to make sure we're doing this absolutely right. Cool. Let's take this part out. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven stakes left. I hope that's enough. I don't think they gave us extras. I just don't like the fact that this rain fly is only held on by stakes. I mean, there's toggles. Yeah, you have toggles here. And that's not great. <laughs> oh, these toggles are horrible. If enough wind came through here, it would not only suck the stakes out of the ground because it would just catch this like a parachute. You can add guy lines, but they don't they don't come with guy lines. Huh. Put them a stick on the other side. So this whole rain fly and this whole system is held on by stakes and two basic toggle systems that have little plastic toggles that fit into a loop that's very loose with no ability to actually tighten it up. I was hoping for at least clips that clip onto the tent to make sure it's on the tent. So if you stake the tent down hard, the rain fly stays with it no matter what. Well, in this situation, if enough wind gets under this rain fly, it's gonna act as a parachute. And if you guys have ever been camping and tent camping with high winds, when wind gets underneath, it's just, ooh, with this, the wind would just be like, yep, that's my rain fly, and just, it would be that way. I don't think they give you enough stakes either. I have two stakes left in one, two, three, four, five. So, two stakes left, and five more staking points. Son of a <laughs> stake down the head portion of this with the last remaining two. At least we have these. I was gonna say use the same stakes as the tent to attach the rain fly to the ground, but the rain fly sticks out so far to give you that vestibule section that it doesn't come close to the actual footprint of the tent. Hey, yay. We need a stake here and a stake here. 
to pull this taut on both sides, but we don't have those. You can see that there's vents. The vents are open on this. The problem is when you open these vents, there is no way to keep them open. As the wind blows down, it pushes the Velcro back together and now your, your vents are Velcroed back down again. So if you have this tent and there's absolutely no wind, it potentially could be okay. But I know there's a lot of other tents I would rather spend 90 bucks on. And it's definitely not a one person tent like this is, claiming to be two people. We have two sections of Velcro on the rainfly. So though there, even though there are two different doors, every time you get in and out of bed at night, you're gonna have to do ripping Velcro before you can get out. Okay, well, that's just weird. That's just super weird. Okay, I think I've had enough of this tent. On top of that, the inside of the tent, the, the bathtub spot that's supposed to give you weatherproofing for obviously water, is it's cool, I like it, but there's so many taped seams that all it takes is one of those tape seams to go bad. Also look, I mean, you also have this part of the rainfly that has no anchor points. So this is gonna be like sucking wind left and right. Nope. <sighs> well, at least you guys know, don't get the rustic ridge two person tent. This is a one season tent and that is one season as an ideal everything tent for it to work properly. <sighs> And on top of that, the zip opening of the rainfly starts here and it folds back, kinda, but then it falls in the dirt. So if you have a wet situation or muddy situation or anything else, or just dusty, your rainfly is now in the dirt and then you gotta flop it back over and then it goes into your tent and on you. Yeah, that doesn't make any sense. And it starts here. So when you get out of the tent, you need, you need the zipper opening to be here. Oh, this is Andrew Bocher with GY6 Outdoors doesn't always go according to plan and the products don't always work and that's what these videos are about. Thanks for watching, thanks for the likes, thanks for the subscriptions. Thank you so much to our fan support. Your fan support helps me buy products like this and test it before you waste your hard earned money. Hope you got something from it. <sighs> Leave a comment in the comment section about tents that you do like and that you may want me to review because I'm frustrated and I would really like to review something good right now. All right, I'll see you guys next time, later.